Hey, deserving listeners. Today, we're going to talk about the rules of therapy and how to talk with people in a way that might be very direct as a therapist. Uh, this episode, I'm going to be presenting a talk between me and Michael Drain of the Unpopular Culture podcast. We had a conversation about that, and I thought I would just present it here. This is the Psychology in Seattle podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Kirk Honda. I am a therapist and a professor. Okay, let's just go to that talk with Michael Drain. Well, okay, so this one is addressed to you, one of your patrons. comes from patron Sam. Hi, Kirk. I am a doting patron and really enjoyed the How to Meet Women episode a few weeks ago. I've been thinking a lot about the manner in which you spoke to the patron in that episode, which I found to be caring, yet serious enough to match the grave nature of the emails. To me, it seems important to approach difficult and potentially dangerous topics with candor and directness. It was interesting to me that you kept repeating you were speaking to the patron as a friend or a cousin. I was wondering what your answer would have been like had this patron been a client. As a CMHC student, which is clinical mental health counseling, it's my understanding that it would not be generally wise to speak to clients in the same way, but why not? Is it that speaking to them so frankly would destroy the therapeutic relationship, or is it that counselors believe their clients can't handle being spoken to so harshly? I understand that you would likely need to deal with the underlying issues, such as the client's trauma history and projective identification, But I wonder what your thoughts are in shooting straight, that's in quotes, with the client in therapy. Is there a time and a place for it? I kind of hope so. Thank you, patron Sam. Yeah, Sam is talking about a episode in which a listener patron wrote in and was, uh, and I went back and forth with him over email just to clarify with him, and, and he was from the Middle East and came to the United States uh, I can't remember why. I think they become actually a therapist, and he was uh, trying to date women as you do, and finding it difficult. And he was deriving conclusions that were quite typical to a certain section of the internet right now, which is that women use their power against men. That women know that men are desperate for them and and manipulate men for their own gain. And he was getting, because of those conclusions, he was getting very angry and very upset and, and would say things rather flippantly that were aggressive and hostile against women. You know, like, now I understand why, I, I don't know if this is something he said directly, but it was something like, now I understand why some guys go on killing sprees or something like that. And it, it was, as the as patron Sam was saying in this email, it was a grave uh, topic. It, was, it, it, it felt very weighty to me. And I debated whether or not I should even make an episode about it. I mean, I went back and forth with him over email. And I was like, man, you know, how do I make this an, uh, into an episode? And so I, I just basically made the episode me giving him advice. And I would read excerpts from the email, and then I would chime in and you know comment on what he's saying. And it was hard because on one level, I uh, had the typical knee jerk reaction, which was to just scream at him and tell him like, stop it. <laughs> But then on another level, I was like, "Well, what's going to get across to him? You know, what what's what are what's he and other people like him going to hear that they will take in?" And so I I tried to so I I was quite confrontational, but at the same time, I was trying to say it in a way that he would hear it. And and so I I was really quite blunt, and I you know at times I was like, "So it sounds to me like you're saying that." women deserve to be physically harmed because you're having trouble having sex with people. (laughs) You know, that's not what I said exactly, but that kind of stuff. And then I would quickly follow it up with something like, now, I'm not saying this to insult you. I'm saying this as if you were a friend or a cousin of mine. Uh, I'm just shooting straight with you. You know, if you were a friend of mine, this is how I'd be talking to you. I kept kept repeating that, you know, because after I would blast him with something. 
Um, incidentally, after he listened to the episode, he emailed me back and he was like, oh my God, thank you so much. Like, you know, it, it, that was actually really helpful for me. And I feel like I need to really think about where my, you know, weird sexist assumptions are coming from, you know? And so it was, it was a success, but patron Sam is like, we, can I talk to clients like this? Cause I, I kind of want to talk to clients the way that you talk to this guy, you know, cause it seemed effective. And what, what I'll say is, yeah, absolutely. Talk to your clients. However, the F you want to talk to your clients, there's no rules to therapy. You know, what I always tell my client or my, my clients, but my, my students, they'll say something like, you know, is it okay or is it appropriate if I do this way? Whatever I hear the word appropriate, I just cringe because to me it implies there's a rule to therapy. Yeah, like what does appropriate mean? You know? Yeah. It's very subjective. Right. I say that. It's like by appropriate, because people use appropriate when they're talking to like kindergartners. You know, it's inappropriate for you to have your hand down your pants. You know what I mean? It's inappropriate for you to hit that person over the head with that block. It's inappropriate. And to me, when people say, is is it inappropriate to do this in therapy? I'm just like, by whose measure, you know? So anyway, there's no rules to therapy. And what I say to people, and I just, I repeat this over and over again, I just say, don't think about what's appropriate or inappropriate. Don't think about the rules. Do what is helpful. If it's helpful to do, if you predict that it's going to be helpful, then do it. Aside from having sex with your clients, which you should never think is helpful for them, but even if it was, don't do it. But aside from that, there's a, there's a lot of things that are available to you. And if it's helpful to sound the way that I sounded in that episode towards that patron, then absolutely do that. And I've done that. I do that all the time. And if he was my client, I would probably have talked to him that way in session. And I've talked to, I've talked to guys like that, actually. I had a guy who was in the, um, the pickup artist community. Do you know about that, Michael, the pickup artist community? No, is that a real thing? <laughs> oh, man, you should do an un- unpopular culture episode about the pickup artist community. It's the, the, the leader or the major figure, his name was um, Mystery. Yeah, and he had his oh, own yeah, TV yeah, show. that's right. Yeah, several years ago, right? He had a show and he yeah. would go around the bars with, uh, you know, some hopeless guy who just didn't yeah. know how to meet girls and he would uh, teach them how to do it. I did see this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's a really interesting subculture in America and it's thriving. And it, and it has its own set of realities. And some of it I appreciate um, in that it helps men to build up their self-confidence and get out there and, you know. But a lot of it is just absurd. And, and similar to what this, you know, this guy with just hostile attitude towards women. And so I've had clients who were like that. And I've, I've gone toe-to-toe with them. Now, I'm not being mean. I'm being... I'm trying to be as caring as possible. I think people misinterpret confrontation with being uncaring. You can be confrontational and caring at the same time. You can be extremely loving while telling people that their, you know, premise is flawed. Anyway, getting back to rules that I will commonly hear people, students will, you know, or supervisees will come to me and that I want to just dispel for everyone out there. But these are very common rules that I, that I hear people saying that they've heard from professors and from literature uh, well, let me ask you, Michael, what do you remember the rules were in graduate school about therapy? Like, don't do this, don't do that. Oh, geez. I had some various eccentric professors. Um, I would, like, some of the quirkier ones that I remember are uh, never to hand the client a box of tissue if they're crying. Oh, my God. <laughs> and the reason, I, I don't, I'm not endorsing this. It's simply what was taught to me. And the reason I was told is because it's invalidating. It's as if to say, oh, here, stop crying. Here's a tissue. Don't do that. You know, and that's not something I ever really fully understood <laughs> or agreed with. Um, but yeah, we, it was a huge no-no. I, it's hard to even grasp the logic. Stupid stuff like that. But the, and then there's the obvious ones like not having sex with your clients, not breaking confidentiality, things that make very good sense. Well, those are, those are ethical things, right? But even the breaking confidentiality thing is nuanced. You know, there are times when you absolutely should break confidentiality. The sex with clients thing, that's, that's always a no-no. Oh, I thought of another one. The classic therapist question, and, and how does that make you feel? Yeah. I was told that that is not good. You don't ask that question. And the reason is because they tend to intellectualize. If I ask you, how are you feeling right now? 
you stop feeling and you start thinking. You intellectualize the the issue and it almost takes you out of it, puts you in the wrong kind of space. What you need to be doing is feeling and experiencing in that moment. And I'm, what I'm asking you to do is cut all that off and be rational. If a student or a random person came up with that rule, I'd be like, yeah, okay, whatever. But these are instructors. And this is why it, it, this stuff drives me crazy. It's such a simplistic way of looking at therapy. And it's, and it's based on just completely flawed logic. And I, I just wonder what compels instructors to come up with the, uh, by what research, you know? And asking someone how they feel is a perfectly good uh, question to ask people. In my experience, it never causes people to intellectualize. It, it, it almost always is the opposite. People start from a place of intellectualism, and when you ask them how they feel, then they're like, oh, then they start crying. <laughs> you know, like that happens all the time. Other stupid rules I've heard, don't cross your legs. Don't cross your arms. Never ask why. And I always, and whenever I hear this, like, why? Why can't you ask why? Right. Isn't it, isn't it more important to be comfortable than, than worrying about crossing your legs? Especially as a new therapist, you're going in nervous enough. Yeah. You know, to have to keep this running mental list of, oh, stand up straight. Don't cross your legs. Don't ask the question. Don't do this when it's also irrelevant anyway. Right. Yeah, uh, it it the the premise is that if you follow a set of techniques and rules and prescriptions, you'll be a good therapist, and that's just the dumbest notion of all time. That humans are enormously complex, and human communication is even more complex. And to reduce it down to these stupid rules is just the dumbest notion of all time. And again, if students or lay people were saying this, then okay, you know, whatever. But instructors, and, and so when I have new students, I like, okay, what stupid rules have you heard so far? You know, and they raise their hand, oh, you're not, and I'll be like, dumb, stupid, idiotic, don't, you know, never self-disclose. I hear that too, never self-disclose. Or never give- Oh, it, that's a good one, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is actually empirically wrong. Um, never give advice, which is also stupid. Now, I the whole thing is is I understand the the spirit behind the rule, which is great. The spirit behind the rule of uh, don't cross your legs, don't cross your arms is you want to give the impression to the client that you're open, that you're open to what they're saying. Now, if being open to a client was simply sitting in front of a client with your legs not crossed and your arms not crossed, then boy wouldn't we be simplistic creatures, you know? Um I can absolutely, and I demonstrate this in class, I will demonstrate to people that I can not cross any of my limbs and be completely closed off from someone and noticeably. And I can also cross my legs and my arms and be totally compassionate and open to somebody. It has nothing to do with your freaking limbs, you know? Um, the, the rule behind don't ask why, you know, that I understand as well, or the spirit behind the rule. You know, they, they're, they're saying don't, make people justify themselves. You know, if someone's like, oh my God, I'm so sad today. You know, don't, don't, don't say to someone, why are you sad? <laughs> like, you don't want to put someone in a position, you don't want to put someone in, in the position where you think you're, sh where they think you're, sh they're, you're shaming them, you know? But if someone says, um, I don't know, like, I'm feeling like shit today, and you, and you can say why to that. Oh, Why? You know, you can say, oh, you know, what's going on? Why, why do you feel that way? You can absolutely ask that question. There's, if you don't, if I told my therapist I feel like shit today and they didn't ask me why, I'd be like, do they care? You know, like, so don't ask why, you know, I understand the spirit behind the rule. Uh, never giving advice. Again, the spirit behind the rule is therapy is not about prescribing things to people usually. Now, sometimes it is. Cognitive behavioral therapy is all about prescribing things, you know, and working on prescriptions, uh, perhaps collaboratively, but you're absolutely providing advice to people. Um, you know, a as a client myself, if I'm going down a road that's stupid and my therapist has some thoughts on that, I want to hear about it. <laughs> I don't want them to hold that in. You know, I want them to be like, well, you know, I don't know. If I were in your shoes, I think this is what I would be doing. You know what I mean? Now, the, the whole idea is you're not overpowering the client. You're not like just directing them to, 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 you know, to do things, which I tell supervisees to stop doing all the time because there's an impulse to take over. 
But the idea that you should never give advice in general is um, it's just a bad, bad rule. Completely agreed. Not The idea of not confronting somebody as a sign of you don't care about them. You know, you don't confront them unless you care. You think of your friends and your family, you know, they'll call you out on something because they care about you. Right. Because it's, and they're in the position to do that. You love them. You trust them. Who else is going to do that? Your therapist should take a similar role in your life and that they're a supportive person in your life. And if they don't bother to call you out on your bullshit, you know, who's going to? Right. And isn't that their job? Right. Something I learned from a mentor was uh, balancing, and uh, I worked in a state hospital where, with very serious personality disorder, so this is an extreme example, but it is, I think it still applies. You have to absolutely confront at the same time you have to balance not overpowering, like you said, or shutting them down. So it's about validation versus change language is how it was put to me. I, I understand what you're going through. I'm validating your experience but I'm not going to let you dwell in it either. I'm not going to let you stay here. We're going to move past this. In my experience, there there is a balance there to be had of, you know, not doing too much on either extreme, but finding a right mix. But that absolutely involves confronting them when needed. Right. If that approach helps you to help people, which it sounds like it does, then absolutely continue to do that. Um, for another clinician, it's going to be a different philosophy. You know that that's the wonderful thing about this profession that keeps me interested in it is that there's no right or wrong answers. You know, there are highly confrontational therapists that are wonderful. There are highly confrontational therapists that are terrible. <laughs> so there's just there's no there's no um, there's no way to know and, unless you actually ask the cl- that particular client in that particular moment, did it help? You know, it's like trying to define a good song or a good piece of art. It's subjective, just like art. It's it's about what works for you personally. Yeah. There's no one size fits all prescription. So that something you touched on just now, that's a great way to get feedback. You know, ask you. Don't be afraid to ask your client. Was this was what we did today? Was this helpful for you? Let's go over what's working and what's not. What's and that's that's all in an attempt to better understand what's working. And then the bottom line really is. Genuine empathy is not going to be generated by crossing your arms or not crossing your arms. The, the idea that you will come off closed off emotionally if you sit a certain way. If you're actually genuinely empathetic, that's going to come through. If you actually really do care, it's going to come through. And the way you're sitting becomes irrelevant. So <laughs> totally. it's it, silly. But, you know, yeah, it, absolutely confront. You know, that's your job. Yeah. Um, not to shut somebody down or make them feel bad. But confrontation is a huge component in therapy. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Just chiming in here. It's just me. I'll finish up this episode in which I presented a talk with Michael Drain from Unpopular Culture Podcast by saying, wow, I get pretty passionate about things sometimes. I get worked up and uh, I I don't know how I feel about that. But, you know, there you go. Anger is a good thing, I think. But I don't know. Sometimes I listen to myself and think, come on, Kirk, tone it down. Don't be such a dick to other people, you know, uh, take it easy. But um, uh, I don't always remember that in the moment. Well, that does it for the episode. Thanks for joining me. Please take care of yourself because you deserve it.